In this episode, you will learn what are the legal risks of using generative AI and how to mitigate them. These issues will be explained by Inga Maobens Kashfast, PhD, Attorney at Law, Associate at Vardinsky and Partners, New Technologies and Data Economy Practice. IGA advises clients on data protection and compliance of new technologies, including AI systems, with the law. She also represents clients in proceedings before the Data Protection Authority. Later, we'll hear an update on the Polish economy. Generative AI is a subset of AI technology that is used to create various types of content. This can be text, images, audio or other media, depending on the input. Although this technology is still relatively new, it has entered our lives and organizations faster than we have managed to realize, let alone identify its consequences. Generative AI is likely to bring many efficiencies and reduce costs of certain business operations. It is therefore not surprising that, regardless of sector, companies have already integrated such systems or are planning to into their workplaces and businesses. However, they do bring many challenges, also of legal nature that need to be identified and addressed in advance. Therefore, in this episode, I will outline the main legal risks of using generative AI and how they may be addressed. The risks depend on how and for what purposes a company is using generative AI, as well as the industry or sector in which it operates. Nevertheless, it is possible to identify certain basic risks that may arise in any organizations. First, the use of generative AI may lead to breaches of confidentiality, data protection and privacy laws, or of legally protected secrets. This risk arises mainly if legally protected information is entered as a prompt into an AI tool. The protection may be due to the fact that the information is personal data, a trade secret, is protected by law, such as professional secrecy or certain regulated sector secrecy obligations, such as banking or insurance, or by a contractual confidentiality clause. The second group of risks relates to potential infringements of intellectual property laws. AI-generated content may infringe copyrights, trademarks, industrial designs or other intellectual property rights of third parties. If such content is used, for example, in marketing campaigns or is incorporated into products, this may expose the company to third-party claims. Another risk may arise from the lack of awareness that AI-generated content is not protected by copyright. This simply means that the entity that generates the AI output does not hold rights to it and anyone may take and use it freely. The third type of risk is related to AI-generated hallucinations and biased or discriminatory information. Current generative AI systems often generate hallucinations, in other words, false information, as well as content that is discriminatory or biased. Any organization that intends to use AI-generated content needs to be aware of its limitations. If a company uses false content to provide services under a contract, it runs the risk of liability for negligence or breach of contract. If it uses false or biased content when providing services to consumers, it also runs the risk of breaching consumer protection and anti-discrimination laws. Obviously, the above list is not exclusive and there are other risks that are sector or industry specific. To mitigate the legal risks while ensuring that you gain the full benefits of generative AI systems, we recommend taking specific steps, preferably before you even decide to implement a specific tool in your organization. First, with the support of your internal stakeholders, you need to determine which AI tool you want to use, or are already using, and for what purposes, for example, the business operations you want to support. Then, you need to review the contracts that providers of generative AI systems offer to know how they work in particular how they use the data inputs they receive. You also need to be aware of their limitations, for example hallucinations and associated risks. You may need to use paid versions of the tools to avoid certain risks, such as disclosing protected or confidential information. Second, once you know which tools you want to implement or allow in your organization, you will need to establish an internal policy on the use of those AI tools. It should set out, among others, the information that may not be used for prompts and that may be used only in certain conditions, in compliance with GDPR and secrecy obligations, how AI-generated output may be used, and an IP health check or clearance for creative industries, such as gaming and entertainment, before any AI-generated output is used in a product. 
the rules for labeling AI-generated content, in particular if the output is to be used externally to consumers or customers. It should also lay down the rules for verifying AI-generated content, if not obviously wrong, discriminatory or biased, particularly if used for human decision-making. Third, you must train your employees, particularly those responsible for using AI tools or their outputs, so that they are aware of the associated legal issues. Lastly, you must monitor the legal developments in this field. Generative AI systems are likely to be covered in a pending EU AI Act, which may place additional restrictions not only on their provision, but also on their use. As with any other new technology, generative AI systems need to be used wisely, with caution and full awareness of the risks they may present. Against this dynamic backdrop, we are supporting our clients along the entire path of integrating generative AI systems into their organizations. Above all, we help in identifying the specific risks and implications of using particular generative AI systems, develop internal policies for their use, and provide employee training that is tailored to the needs of the company and its sector. On 15th October, parliamentary elections took place in Poland, as a result of which the new government will probably be formed by opposition parties in favor of lifting the Sunday trading ban. It was introduced in 2018 by the party that will now be removed from power. In favor of lifting the Sunday trading ban are the owners of retail chains and shopping malls, which are usually foreign-controlled companies. Workers employed in the trade are strongly in favor of maintaining the ban. Public opinion is divided on this issue. 54% of citizens are in favor of lifting the ban because they want to have more freedom to shop, while 38% are in favor of maintaining the ban because they believe it leads to harmful consumerism and besides, shopping can be done online. The opponents of the ban raise mainly economic arguments. The infrastructure of shopping centers does not work on Sundays, but generates costs like interest on loans, security, heating and cleaning. The lifting of the ban would give additional jobs in the trade, especially in shopping malls, and increase the turnover of the shops and consequently tax revenues to the state budget. In small towns, young people want to be able to spend time in shopping malls because they have few other options. However, it is most likely the changes to the law resulting in the lifting of the ban will be vetoed by the president, and the opposition has too few votes in the same to override a presidential veto. In conclusion, lifting the ban is unlikely. Thanks for watching this episode. See you next time.